The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, and I thank the gentleman for, for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to H.R. 985. In addition to the legislation's many problems that have already been mentioned by our colleagues, I'm particularly concerned about what the bill does in the so-called FACT Act, which would have devastating and which will have a devastating impact on workers exposed to asbestos. I'm acutely aware of the devastating impact that asbestos exposure has on working men and women in this country because I represent an area with several shipyards. In the last few decades, in my district alone, several thousand local shipyard workers have developed asbestosis, lung cancer, and mesothelioma from asbestos exposure that occurred between the 1940s and 1970s. Hundreds of these workers died, and asbestos deaths and disabilities are continuing due to the long latency, latency period associated with this illness. Now, I believe that we cannot consider the legislation affecting the victims of, of asbestos exposure without remembering exactly who caused the problem. Court findings show that the companies made willful and malicious decisions to expose their employees to asbestos. Here are a couple of examples. One case in 1986. After hearing both sides, the New Jersey Supreme Court uh, declared, it is indeed appalling to us that the company had so much information on the hazards of asbestos, were, that the ha of the hazards that asbestos workers as early as the mid-1930s, and that it not only failed to use that information to protect the workers, but more egregiously, it also attempted to withhold this information from the public. A few years earlier, the, Supreme, the Superior Court Appellate Division in New Jersey said that the jury here was justified in concluding that both defendants, fully appreciating the nature and extent and gravity of the risk, nevertheless made a conscious and cold-blooded business decision in utter and flagrant disregard of the rights of others to take no protective or remedial action. In a separate case in Florida, after hearing both sides, the court declared that, it, that the clear and convincing evidence in this case revealed that for more than 30 years, the company concealed what it knew about the dangers of asbestos. The fact that the company's conduct was even worse than concealment, it also included intentional and knowing misrepresentations concerning the danger of its asbestos-containing product. That's who we're talking about. These are the type of companies who will benefit from this legislation. The only suggestion that people are getting paid more than once is absurd. The fact of the matter is that because of bankruptcies, most of them aren't getting close to what they actually should be receiving, but the bill before us does not help those victims. It actually hurts them. The bill is nothing more than a scheme to delay the proceedings and allow victims to get even less than they're getting now. Because of the delay, many of the victims will die before they get to court. This helps the guilty corporations that have inflicted this harm on innocent victims because if the, vic if the plaintiffs die before they get to court, their pain and suffering damages are extinguished. If they can delay the cases enough so that the plaintiffs die before they get to trial, the corporations will not only get to delay their payments, but when they ha finally pay, they'll pay much less. These are the people who made those conscious and cold-blooded business decisions. Those are the ones who will actually benefit from this legislation at the expense of hard-working, innocent victims. And the victims of this corporate wrongdoing oppose this bill. Regrettably, many of those victims are our veterans because they are working aboard Navy ships. Mr. Speaker, we should reject this legislation. I yield back the balance of my time.